Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here doing our second example video of area between polar curves using integrals. We're going to find the area inside r equals cosine theta and also inside of r equals sine theta in this video. Now you'll notice my area between these connects to the pole, so I'm not actually going to need to do any subtracting of farther function squared minus inner function squared in my integral. What I can do here though is I can use the symmetry of these and maybe just find half of this area and multiply by two, this lens shaped region here. So if you think about maybe making uh, this point here our alpha and this point here our beta, if I move along the curve from there to there, then I'll be finding the area of all the sectors inside of just that region, just the one half of our lens here, and then we'll go ahead and multiply by two. So if I'm moving along the curve in this direction, then that makes this my alpha here, and that makes this my beta when I set up my area to do this. And we'll multiply by two. So let's go ahead and say area is going to equal two times whatever I get due to symmetry. Now remember our formula is one half integral from alpha to beta, and we're only moving along one function here, so I don't even actually need to really include the other circle, so I just need to figure out this function squared. This function here, my circle that is symmetric across y-axis here, is actually the r equals sine of theta, so if I square that, that's actually going to be sine squared theta, and I'll integrate that d theta. So now we want to find alpha and beta. So I've got my alpha here. It's on my r equals sine theta at the pole. So that would be when that graph has an r value of zero, right? So this is going to be when sine of theta is equal to zero. And where is that true first? Well, that's true at theta equals zero. So my alpha is going to be zero. And my beta here, if you'll notice, this is an intersection point of the r equals sine theta and r equals cosine theta. So this point here would be when those r's are equal, when those formulas are equal. So that's going to be when sine theta is the same as cosine of theta. And if you think about where that's true, that's actually true in the first quadrant at an angle that you should probably predict looking at the direction of this. That's actually going to be true at theta equals pi over four, right? That is where both of these things are square root two over two on our unit circle. So our bound here, beta, is going to be pi over four. Okay, so that will find the area of what I've labeled here, and then we'll multiply by two to get the area actually inside the entire lens. So if we do this, we'll do a couple of things. The two and the one half will reduce and we'll have integral from zero to pi over four. And also remember, we'll need to reduce the power of sine squared theta here. So we'll use the double angle and consider this one minus cosine of double this angle. So one minus cosine two theta over two d theta. I'm going to go ahead and bump out the over two so I don't have to deal with any fraction action in my integral. And so we'll say one half integral from zero to pi over four of 1 minus cosine 2 theta d theta. Okay, let's do our integrating now. We will get 1 half on the outside and integrating d theta. If I integrate 1, I will get theta. Integrating cosine 2 theta, I would get sine 2 theta and the reciprocal of 2 would come out. So I'll get minus 1 half sine 2 theta. We will evaluate from 0 to pi over 4. Let's go ahead and plug those in. So we'll get 1 half. First I will get pi over 4 minus 1 half sine of 2 times pi over 4 would be pi over 2. Minus plugging in 0, I would get 0 minus 1 half sine of 0. And you can probably tell by looking at these, this is zero obviously, and sine of zero is also zero. So here we're going to get one half times pi over four minus sine of pi over two is one. So one half times one would just give us half there. And for this one, we will then distribute the half and we'll get pi over eight minus one fourth. Okay, so that's our area inside of the lens between these two circles. Thanks for watching, everybody. Check out our example three video for area between polar curves. We'll see you then.